Most of the artifacts in world-class museums today are the results of successful treasure hunting. However, in 2015, an unconventional treasure hunt led to the discovery of long-lost treasures. The discovery of the remains of a 300-year-old shipwreck says a lot about the history of Europe and South America, and it may have sparked a feud across both continents. Today on Crunch, you will be learning the history about the unanticipated discovery of the Holy Grail of Shipwrecks, San Jose and its $17 billion cargo. The San Jose Between the 15th and 18th centuries, large ships were constructed for the Spanish government to serve as warships, typically carrying hundreds of soldiers and ammunition. These ships were called galleons, and the San Jose ship was one of these ships. San Jose was the pride of the Spanish Navy. It was the largest galleon in the country's fleet, constructed in 1696 and launched two years later. San Jose was properly equipped for its purpose with 64 guns, three tall masts to support the sails, and a capacity of up to two tons. When the San Jose set sail in 1698, it was headed to South America to secure treasures from the mines of Peru, which was under Spanish colonization at the time. After the exploitation of the Peruvian mine, the San Jose was loaded with about two tons of gold, silver, and emerald jewels and set sail for Europe. During the journey back to Spain, the galleon was accompanied by a treasure fleet of three Spanish warships and 14 merchant vessels. In 1708, when the hurricane season was near, San Jose and its company sailed from Portobello in Panama to Cartagena, a key port city on the Caribbean coast of Colombia where the ships intended to take shelter during the upcoming hurricane season. Early June 1708, the fleet was intercepted by four English ships commanded by Commodore Charles Wager near Beru. A deadly cannon battle ensued between the British and Spanish fleet. Unfortunately, the latter was outnumbered and as though the British fleet had been tipped off about its contents, San Jose received the heat of this attack. The deck of San Jose was littered with destruction, and suddenly the galleon went up in flames. This explosion resulted from two factors, the British bombardment of the ship and the ignition of the gunpowder store of the ship. Following the explosion, San Jose began to sink with all its valuables and out of the 600 crew members, only 11 survived. The 17 accompanying vessels returned to Spain without the long-awaited treasures which were supposed to fuel the ongoing War of Spanish Succession. The Discovery and Treasures of the San Jose In 2015, the Colombian government announced that the San Jose wreck had been located independently by maritime archaeologists, the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution WHOI, in cooperation with the Colombian Navy. Using state-of-the-art equipment, including a remotely operated underwater vehicle, or ROV, the wreck was examined and the National Navy of Colombia took pictures. These pictures were released a little over a month ago by the Office of the President of Colombia. The photographs were taken at a depth of almost 700 meters, deep enough to hide the treasures from illegal treasure hunters, but not from marine growth. The pictures show that the wooden body of San Jose has been covered in algae, which typically thrive on shipwrecks. However, the cargo aboard this ship before it sank was found intact and in good condition despite being underwater for 300 years. A representative for the Colombian Navy said cannons, coins, and gold bars could be seen lying on the seafloor all in perfect condition. In fact, the marine archaeologists confirmed the shipwreck was San Jose by the dolphins engraved on its cannons. An exposed set of delicate porcelain tableware from China was also found in good condition, so good that even the patterns and inscriptions could be read clearly. Experts believe that the depth of the shipwreck and its underwater treasures is why the integrity of each content has been preserved for over three centuries since 700 meters underwater is far from the reach of sunlight required for the survival of most marine organisms. A statement by Admiral Jose Joaquin Amezquita reads, With the inscriptions discovered, it was possible to determine the manufacturing sites of the ship's cannons, in Seville and Cadiz in the year 1655. The Colombian Navy's Maritime Director General went on to say, you also can see the different objects of gold, including the macuquinas, a type of coin, and the date they were minted. 
The Colombian government classified the wreck's precise location as a state secret to protect the San Jose from exploitation by greedy illegal treasure hunters. It emphasized Colombia's claim of ownership of the discovered treasures. The Lost Treasure of the Spanish Succession the War of the Spanish Succession has been described as the First World War of Modern Times, with major campaigns fought across Europe in France, Spain, Italy, Germany, and at sea. The war began with the death of Charles II in 1700. He was plagued with infertility and therefore had no heir, making him the last of the Spanish Habsburgs. This sparked a struggle for power between the dynastic family of the Habsburgs and the House of Bourbon lasting over a decade. After King Charles II died on November 1, 1700 without an heir, his succession plans were shared with the power holders of Europe, but his arrangements didn't sit well with most of them. In his will, King Charles gave the crown to a distant relative, Philip, Duke of Anjou, grandson of King Louis XIV of France. This caused a backlash from a large number of other kingdoms including England, Holland, Prussia and Austria, who were part of a grand alliance. They saw this succession plan as a move that would jeopardize the balance of power in Europe, and their mission was to prevent any dynasty from having too much power. To prevent France from having control of two vast empires, the Grand Alliance had a candidate of their own. They chose Habsburg Archduke Charles of Austria to take over the Spanish throne instead of Philip. After seeing where half of the European leaders stood, Louis XIV of France had an important choice to make. If he accepted the will, a war could ensue between France and the Holy Roman Emperor Leopold I, whose son was the candidate of the Grand Alliance and therefore had the support of the maritime powers. If he refused to name Philip King according to the will, the inheritance would pass to the Habsburgs according to the terms of the will, and France would have to fight for those possessions. Either way, war was unavoidable, and Louis picked which he'd rather fight. When he proclaimed Philip King of Spain and announced that France and Spain would be united, war broke out. The Grand Alliance forces under John Churchill, Duke of Marlborough, and the Imperial General Prince Eugene of Savoy launched several campaigns against France, which was reluctantly supported by Portugal and Bavaria and Cologne, two kingdoms under Germany. In 1708, the San Jose Galleon was a casualty of this war. From the mines of Peru, the galleon held a stash of emerald jewels and coins of gold and silver, which were headed to Europe on King Louis XIV's request, where they would fund the French in the war which had gone on for about seven years. Unfortunately, the English Navy, on behalf of the Grand Alliance, interrupted the transit of these treasures. San Jose sank and everything in it was buried under the waves. As far as the battle went, the French forces were defeated in several major battles, including Blenheim in 1704, Ramilles in 1706, and Oudenard in 1708. Finally, the war ended after 13 years in 1714, with Philip of Anjou winning control of Spain. The Grand Alliance finally accepted him on the condition that Philip give up his right to be King of France. Territories were redistributed across Europe, Austria got most of Spanish Italy, and Britain got Spanish Menorca and Gibraltar. In the end, the balance of power was restored. However, the war cost the lives of almost 2 million people, and for over 300 years, about $17 billion worth of treasures was lost under the sea. The Contested Ownership of the San Jose Since its discovery on the coasts of Colombia in 2015, Different countries have claimed possession of San Jose and the enormous fortune it holds underwater. The battle for who gets to keep the holy grail of shipwrecks has been fought for years on end in courtrooms with governments suing governments. A group of investors from the US under the name Sea Search Armada claim to have discovered the shipwreck off the coast of Colombia in 1981. However, the Colombian government denied the proposed 65-35% share offer and refused to grant the SSA license to explore the ship found in their territory. According to the SSA, after this turn of events, the Colombian government passed a bill that stated that the Colombian government had ownership of every treasure found anywhere in Colombia. This new law left the SSA with a 5% finder's reward, and because of this, the American firm sued the Colombian government. 
The lawsuit happened more than once and the court proceedings took place both in Colombia and the United States. Colombia claimed that San Jose was part of its long buried inheritance and eventually the Colombian government was declared the owner of the San Jose shipwreck and all $17 billion it holds. This verdict means Colombia is obliged to protect and preserve the ship and all of its sunken contents. However, more countries with a stronger claim to San Jose than the SSA have broken their silence. The ship belonged to the Spanish Navy before it was dealt a great blow by the British fleet and sank underwater. According to international laws, the ship and its contents belong to the Spanish government. However, the Colombian government won't budge in its claims or divulge the exact location of San Jose. Essentially, the Colombian government considered this shipwreck their property on the basis that it was a fortune passed down to them from their Spanish colonial masters. After all, the treasures aboard their ship were stolen from South America by Spain. And on the other hand, Spain claims the San Jose was theirs and its contents were stolen fair and square. Although it looks like Colombia's claim on San Jose is the strongest, we'll look out for any plot twists that might emerge in the future. What happens now? Since the Colombian government has declared that San Jose and all its treasures belong to them, excavation and the study of the wreck site have begun. Colombia has asked prospective salvagers to register their intent in recovering the treasures that have been lost for more than three centuries. One of the plans put forward by the former president of Colombia, Juan Manuel Santos, was the construction of a museum in Cartagena to host some of the unique contents of the galleon. For the sake of exploration, the Ministry of Culture in 2016 suggested that state-of-the-art laboratories are created. These laboratories are expected to include the professional input of specialists from different spheres in order to study the shipwreck and its contents properly. Also, soil and sea depth studies are being carried out to determine the appropriate extraction methods of the ship's content. In summary, according to a related press report in 2018, the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, or UNESCO, advised Colombia against salvaging the wreck. However, after years of studying to come up with the safest approach, the Colombian government is moving fast to recover as much as they can, because it's unknown how much longer these precious artifacts can stay underwater before they lose their essence. So, who do you think truly owns the rights to San Jose and its treasures? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching Crunch History. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe.